Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Guess what? Bought yet another tent. Actually, that's not quite true. I got another tent. I didn't buy this one. One Tigress reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try their new Mona. So it's quite a narrow bag, but it's uh, it's quite long, I noticed. Uh, with everything inside it, let's have a quick look. Just on about 1.7 kilos, so not the lightest for a solo backpacking tent, to be honest. But I do believe it's quite, quite spacious. I quite like the wee kind of sealable roll top bag. So that'll keep it kind of waterproof. Obviously, you remove the hang, hang tags and uh, instructions and the like, it'll get a wee bit lighter. So I see they just call it a Mona camping tent. That's very general. Maybe that's what it's about. Maybe it's just meant to be general use. They don't say ultralight backpacking or backpacking or bike packing. Just very modestly, a camping tent. So what's in the bag? You've got uh, a set of aluminium 7001 generic poles. There's a cross pole and the rest of the frame in a separate piece. There's eight pegs about six inches long, um, very typical kind of Y section with the cord pullers on top, so that makes them quite easy to use. It's a two-piece tent, so it's inner and outer. So we've got quite a nice grey coloured fly sheet and then a brown inner with a mesh, mostly mesh by the look of it inside, but we'll get a look at that in a minute. And it also comes with a footprint separately as well, which would save you probably about 100 grams or just over. But at 140 pounds, I suppose it is quite competitively priced, but that's also a busy market with 3FUL and Nature Hike and Van Gogh and the like as competitors. So at the back corners, the narrow end or the tail end of the tent, uh, these kind of hold the inner up and there's just a kind of solid captive pole built inside. I think one of the other things that would have probably made it a more useful tent, especially for bike packing, would be to make the aluminium poles shorter sections. So these are pretty long, so if you strap this to your bars, um, it's actually a wee bit long for certain bikes and certain holders. The main pole itself just clips into these metal clips at the corner of each part of the tent. Poles in place, and you've just got to clip it up. This is just slightly awkward because the sleeve is quite tight. So you can see I'm having, I'm having trouble again just trying to show you here, just trying to get this pole in. Look. The frame itself is actually a tripod, so you've got two, the pole extends down to those corners, but coming back this way, it's a single pole, and then you've actually got to rely on the guy lines. One there, and at the various other points. And the crossing pole, unfortunately, is separate. It would have been nice to see a hub here. So that's the inner up, that's quite simple. Just mostly a clip system. Most of it was very straightforward. One thing I'm not so keen on is Velcro straps, to be honest. There's a few points at which you've got to Velcro the fly sheet onto the pole. I guess just to stop the fly moving around too much in relation to the frame. When I set up, it's been up overnight actually just to check for leak tests. We'll nip in and have a look and see if there's any problems, but I doubt it. It's all taped. If I show you, if I just start wobbling it about, there's really not an awful lot of guy lines and possibly not in the right place. Uh, it's also missing two pegs. It really needs another peg down at the bottom here and one to take the back, the tail guy line. So I guess you'd really want to pitch it tail into wind. This side in particular is unsupported, so there's a large couple of big panels there and there's nothing really to stop that being bowed in by the wind. Is this panel here again, it presents quite a large area to the wind as well, although you'd hopefully be away from the wind on this. But what I found is that the fly sheet is easily touching the inner and could easily transfer moisture through to the inner tent. It would have been nicer if the tie backs had been elastic. <laughs> On the upside, it has a two way zip so you can vent it down the way for cooking and for just some extra ventilation at night. Zip along the bottom and then a zip going up in an arch. Uh, so basically like a, an L shape, I guess. Well, that's been out for the 24 hour rain test and yep, passed with flying colours. On the inside, I think it's, it's selling point is the internal space. It feels pretty roomy. Um, I've just noticed that for some reason it does have a windproof fabric coming up the first quarter on one side of the tent, but weirdly, 
on the door side, it's all mesh. So it kind of looks as if it's kind of designed for American through hiking type scenarios. Um, oh, I've just noticed actually that's a nice design. Never spotted that. It's got a gear loft built in at the top. That's actually very nice. I like that. So that's good. Um, the impression is it's really wide. I'll give you the dimensions on screen, but I can tell just by looking at it at the moment. I'll take my shoes off. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it does feel very spacious inside. And it also has a little boot space, a zip here, where you can access and throw some more gear in at the back, which I like. It has a hanging loop on the inside at the top here, but no loop on the door side and doesn't seem to have the ability to string up a washing line, which would have been great just by adding a loop in here. But this is nice. As I say, look, that's a nice spacious gear loft. Built in gear loft is good. The wall comes up quite high at the bottom down here. It's all taped. Quality wise, it's absolutely up there with other tents and it's in its same kind of price point. I don't have a problem with the quality of it. Ground sheet comes with a footprint, which is also nice. You can see the space down here I was talking about. So this is accessed via this zip. Pop your boots in there, but you get your pack in there, I think actually out of the way. A couple of gear pockets tucked in a position where they won't sag too badly. So that's quite good. And another one just behind me here. Trying to understand what it is that's different, what it is that's bringing to this kind of market that would make you choose it over a ton of other comparable tents. You know, tents like Van Gogh, Nature Hike, 3F, UL, they're all in similar price points. And I can't see why you would take this over, over them. Other than the space feels a wee bit like a big Agnes Copper Spur, or maybe a Nemo Hornet, which the design seems to be partly based on. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I just don't quite get it. It's like they've, they've designed something they thought, oh, we'll throw this at the market because it looks similar to everything else that's out there and they sell, but without actually really thinking about it and testing it themselves. See, this end reminds me a lot of a Big Agnes or a Hornet, a uh, Nemo Hornet type tent where normally there's a cutaway on the fly here to save a bit of weight and they put in a solid inner tent fabric. So um, this is waterproof. But on this one, as you can see here, look, it's just clapping against the fly sheet. The fly needs an extra point to be pulled out. So this is just totally open to cold air breezes coming through. I could easily cook in here without too much problem. There's plenty of height above the stove. There's enough ground space here to get a pack tucked away, probably on this side. Shoes and bits and pieces here. And of course, you've always got the area at the back here as well for extra stuff. I'm sorry to moan about the Mona, but I think it's a case of must try harder. It needs some finesse, it needs some features to make it at least unique or more user friendly. It's a reasonable weight, it's not light enough though, it's at 1 in 1.6 kilos for a through hiking tent from what I can tell. It's too heavy. This should be around about 1.1 uh, or a kilo roughly to make it attractive to the market. It does have a good amount of internal space, but then so does something like a copper spur or the Nemo tents. So I suppose the other thing you must look at is, is it the price? Would people buy it because of the price? £140 roughly retail compared to £300, £400 upwards probably for one of the um, premium brands and the through hiking brands. But then I still think you could probably just pick up a 3FUL or a Nature Hike. Love the gear loft. That's probably my favourite bit in it, to be honest. And I do like the space. It does feel airy, big. I wouldn't feel claustrophobic in here at all. But... Beyond that, I am struggling to get enthusiastic about it and I'm really wondering what it's about. Um, and I wish also that they'd put solid material on both sides to keep the wind out because it really limits the seasons you can use it in. I'd love to know what you think of this. Is it something you would consider buying? I'm not so sure. Don't have a problem with the quality, but uh, it's just the quality of design. It's just as if they've just chucked it out there without really thinking about it. Sorry, One Tigress, because I think you do make a lot of good bushcraft type tents. And I've seen some stuff that I do find very interesting. But this one just seems like you just ain't tried hard enough on it. Thanks for watching.